riffs are too repetitive, the lyrics make no sense. All the songs are B-sides and the cover art's a mess. There's so much here to tear apart. Listen to it for a week, now that we pass past. Why I Hate This Album Podcast with Tim and Garrett. Hello and welcome to another episode of Why I Hate This Album. I am one of your hosts, Garrett Harvey, with me as always, Sideshow Mel to my Sideshow Bob, co-host extraordinaire, Timothy Richardson. Tim, how the hell are you? I'm bad, Garrett. You know this. <laughs> I mean, you look the part, friend. I'll give you that. Congratulations. I'm sure the viewers enjoy it. And hey, we don't know if there's even viewers. Find the feed. You got the whole look down. Congratulations. That's true. Do you think they can tell oh. how scraped up I am? Maybe. I mean, it's an HD feed. So yeah, yeah, probably. Those are some deep scrapes. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. You want to discuss those scrapes? <laughs> I mean, I th- you were there. It was- uh... Sure, sure. No, I'm, I'm talking about for the listener, Tim. We- I apologize. I should not have re-suggested this album. I shouldn't have tried (laughs) to do it. It's 37 minutes. It's a long 37 minutes. And I didn't didn't think I could do it. I think it was some sort of Christopher Nolan interstellar situation. I I don't even know. At one point, I heard heard the voice of Michael Caine, but it just seemed like you'd start a 37-minute album and then two days later, the album would end. But uh, enough of these vagaries, Tim. Before we even discuss the potentially space-time warping abilities of the album, we must give it a name. So I ask, what album have we been listening to for an entire two weeks straight? We have been listening to what is apparently the best album by Attila, June 25th, 2003's About That Life. And to be clear, this is the metalcore band, not the heavy metal band from New York City that was active in the mid 80s, and definitely not the Billy Joel band that was active from 1969 to 1970. Those are different bands, and I have never heard any music from either, but I can guarantee you those are better bands. This Attila was suggested by Alex way back in June 2018. Austin Counts, Canyon, Kenyon, one of those two, Kenyon, Canyon, Maxwell, Oscar from Sweden and good old reliably terrible quasi 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 nailed it this was recommended by recommended threatened forced upon us by a number of people against our will we tried I guess we're gonna get right into it we tried to do this before it's the only album Tim to my memory maybe you can correct me the only album I'm aware of that we tried to listen to and came to a never before or since double veto absolutely I believe I was in the closet it, and I didn't even make it through this album a full time. Sorry, I was literally in a closet, to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I listened to every album for the first time, and I emerged- For the first time. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I can't be in there the whole week. And I emerged from the closet, and I looked at Garrett, and he looked at me, and just I, I said, I can't do this. And he said, that's fine. Let's just abandon this and uh, claim we never did it. And luckily, those were back in the days before the prep episode, because we hadn't announced that we were going to do this beforehand, so mm. we just let it slip away. And I think that was the wise decision. Garrett, I am scraped horribly from a window. Okay, sure, sure. Right, that's... I didn't know Gino was so strong. All right. Uh, Well, okay. (laughs) I I didn't think we were going to talk about this. I'm so scraped. Uh, We have to discuss it. The viewers will be asking if I'm okay. Hey, Tim, we don't know if they're viewers. Find the feed. And yes, we do know. We've seen them. The numbers are in. Some of you are viewers. Congratulations. (laughs) Okay. Let's just get right the fuck into it. In a what's goose for the, what's goose for the good, what is good for the goose is in fact horrible for the gander. Tim and I were recently, well- you know what? I need to back up. As you heard in the prep episode two weeks ago, Tim and I called our shot. We said, we're doing it again. We gave you the brief background that we had tried it before and we're diving back into the pool. We're going to do Attila. Then Tim went into his listening closet. I stayed on the couch in the living room like a normal person. We both gave it a listen. He emerged from the listening closet, tears streaming down his face. Sometimes it's related. Sometimes it isn't. And I asked, what's up? I don't want to words in your mouth, Tim. What did you say when you emerged from that closet? I said, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I won't right. do it. I'll fight everyone. No, but you did say you would fight everyone and boy, howdy. God damn it. You tried. Uh, but uh, no sooner did we inform the staff that Tim and I were, were going to be vetoing 
vetoing Attila about that life again. The double <laughs> double veto, the quad veto. I don't even know if that's in our bylaws. No sooner could we make the announcement that three hours later, I mean, I, Tim, you, I guess you kind of have to explain in more detail what exactly happened. I was going to give broad strokes. We found ourselves on a ship in the middle of the Atlantic, saw style, with a copy of Attila, a bucket, and nothing more than hostess Twinkies, enough for two people in a week. I think that gets all the details there. Uh, Long story short, Garrett and I mutually made the decision that not only were we going to veto it, we were going to make a run for it because the staff did not seem pleased, uh, especially after I fought them all. And so we did. And we only made it about three hours before Gino, who has some tracking skills. I'll give him that. He also has some incapacitating (laughs) skills because again, as you said, we woke up uh, floating on the ocean and well, you know, in in hindsight, Tim, I've had, you know, two weeks to reflect on this and it's been an awkward two weeks because as you know, Tim and I cannot discuss the album prior to the episode. So when you find yourself being renditioned onto a ship by a septuagenarian Italian fascist, and all you have is a copy of Attila's About That Life, it is tempting to discuss it to some degree, but we didn't. Right. For the first time in history, Garen and I both were in solitary confinement in the same room. Yeah, that's a fair way to put it. I mean, sure, we had conversation. Yeah, but you've heard of the quality of our conversation. It's not great. It's not great. And, And given all stimulus removed, again, minus the one thing we can't talk about, real Twilight Zone situation, we were, you know, grasping at straws. It it was a lot of, what color gray do you think the inside of the hull of this ship is? Do you think it's a a coal ship? Are all ships coal ships? (laughs) Oh, Tim, you remember this one? I can't believe... (laughs) You're going to laugh when you remember this one. Remember the third day when we started wishing we had more water? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The the prospect of more water kept me sane when we had no water. Sure, sure. The joke was on you, though, in that we never got more (laughs) water. Uh, Uh, Now, Gino's a dick. What we didn't reveal in all of these stories is why did it take two weeks? And I don't have an answer. (laughs) It's because Gino (laughs) is very old and forgot he left us there. Oh, Jesus Christ, really? He is simultaneously with it enough to hunt us, capture us, incapacitate us, and put us on a ship, imprisoning us there for two weeks, but also cannot remember where he left us or that he left us. You know, that sounds mildly improbable. And if, if you're a new listener, congratulations, welcome to the party, and also how dare you take this long to get here. But a small refresher, uh, Gino is, of course, our longstanding producer here on the show. Gino, you want to say hi? Dead asleep. He's also a janitor and lawyer. He has a power of attorney over us and the show for some reason. But anyway, we're getting too sidetracked. I just want to kind of give people context for who this man is. But now that you kind of put it together, Tim, let's talk about it. You've got Gino, who definitely has shot people. Yes. For sure. So he's Mm -hmm. a marksman. We've got a plethora of propofol just (laughs) lying about. Yeah. (laughs) Most of it hidden I guess within that's our my walls. Fault. Yeah, I'll own that. I can own that. That's me. Lock up your propofol. 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 Jesus Christ! You Tim, can't I smell say, toast. You can't say it, but you sure can administer it. <laughs> that's right, and that's all that matters. Here's your propofol. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you stupid or wrong? Uh, Anyway, so yeah, you know, once you do that, we've got 49, 53. I don't know. I've lost count. I feel like the interns have started recruiting more interns. Yes, but they also Uh, die at an alarmingly high rate overseas. uh, Overseas, not under our roof. Sure. We still prefer the term transition. Yes, to the afterlife. To a new opportunity (laughs) in the ground. (laughs) The point is we listened to Attila. I think that was where we landed here. Sure. Yeah. Guys, we did it. You're welcome. You know, all you had to do was lock us up saw style and we didn't kill each other. We listened to Attila on repeat. And Tim, I got to ask after an entire two weeks with it, do you hate this album? I do in fact hate this. This is terrible. This is, okay. this was and is okay. and will always be just truly awful. What about you, friend? Well, now I'm going to cut your face. You know what, Tim? It's overreactions like that that I feel like might be construed as bullying me into one position or the other. I don't appreciate it. Oh, I apologize, Garrett. As Assuming you make the correct decision, whatever that might be, I will not mm-hmm. cut your face. Hmm. Okay, I guess that's, you know, compromise. Uh, no, Tim, uh, this is all fun and games to get to an inevitable conclusion. Fuck this c- <laughs> Fuck it. I hate this. I think we With might have to bleep stick. a lot of that, because that was a knife. <laughs> you know what, You're we really of should. A knife. That that's- is, uh, yeah, that man died by With a 
gonna have to read that too. Yeah, probably <laughs> most of it, right? Oh. I am on fire today. Garrett, other than the one time or partial time you've listened to this album several years ago, have you ever heard Attila before? No, no. I think I've thoroughly filled in my history. Aside from being renditioned to the mid-Atlantic, tough to say, I, I briefly listened to it. And, you know, you guys have heard it. No, no fucking history whatsoever. What about you, Tim? Have you Did you have some secret Attila history that you've been hiding from me all week? Nope. If I did, I would have never agreed to do it that first week. That sounds right. Great stuff. That brings us to the history of the band. So, Tim, before we can talk about the album itself, it is important that we understand a little bit about these idiots. Uh, that's not right. They've managed to make millions of dollars off of the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yes. So, idiot is the wrong term. I apologize, gentlemen. These talentless... I don't know if they're talentless. We'll get into this in the general thoughts, because I think one okay, of them I, is I, talentless, I, but that I don't know about the rest. <laughs> hey, we'll get into it. All right. I don't know the right words. I hate it, Tim. I hate it so much, but take us on a journey. Help us understand who are these clowns. That's probably fair. And how did Attila come to be? Do you think they're real clowns? No, not real clowns. Oh, okay. In the pejorative sense, not in the yeah, anatomic sense. Men. Right. This band, Garrett, unsurprisingly, was formed by high schoolers. Christopher Joseph Franzak is the main guy. He would like to be called Franz, I think due to its similarity to Fonz. He's the vocalist. He does all the bad vocals we've been listening to this week. And he's kind of I the only- he looks like uh, Christopher Mintz Plas. He McClellan. does. Yeah, like a little chubbier version or maybe slightly more adult or- Ooh, maybe uh, for the nickname this week, Tim, we could call him McChubbin. Hmm. Too much? I think Too it's- Too cutesy? We'll see. Anyway, though- You could save your will sees. Okay. All right. You can just say <laughs> C.J. McChubbin is the only founding member that is still in the band, so we're going to focus mostly on him at this point, Fair. except for a couple allegations later on. C.J. formed this with some guys in high school in Atlanta in 2005, a year that Garrett was genuinely trying to be a serious adult with a serious job that did not include living on a couch bed and Beck hiding behind this couch bed, emerging at night only to hang from the living room chandelier by his tail and observe Garrett sleep while making this repetitive clicking noise that prevents me from sleeping. It's what, it what's was happening while I sleep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Gary. I mean, yes, I do agree. What you're talking about is a hundred percent true. I was eagerly and successfully pursuing adulthood. Beck Hansen has a tail. Anyway, uh, the, allegedly the band. No, not allegedly. That's fact. If you mm, see him, grab yeah, that tail. That is slander. <laughs> no. That's alleged. Uh, grab that tail, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever see Beck. <laughs> I think that Beck is the sort of person that even if he didn't, first of all, if he wasn't living behind our couch, if he was in fact touring or living in LA and didn't have a tail, I think he'd like spreading that rumor. You know what? I agree. All right. The band was named after Attila the Hun, who CJ had recently discovered in a book. He was 16 or so. He was in high school. (laughs) He is, from what I can tell, a small to medium sized, non-intimidating in any way man, Uh, likely was the same way as a boy. And he decided that he really identified with Attila the Hun, who, again, he had no idea existed until he was approximately halfway through high school. Allegedly, (laughs) that's what the legends would have us believe. So, they self-released a demo called Fallacy in 2007. They were either still in high school or just barely out of high school. Then they released Soundtrack to a Party in 2008 with the label Static Factory, and then signed with uh, Artery Recordings in 2010. Now, they toured with bands named See You Next Tuesday, Arsonists, Get All the Girls, and Chelsea Grin. This is sort of the company they're keeping, people that are naming their bands like that. So they're all probably cool, really cool. Oh, yeah. And then in 2010, they released their second label album, Rage. 2011, they released Outlaw. So they're pretty productive. In 2012, CJ was allegedly denied entry into Canada for an unspecified felony on his record. That may or may not be the case at this point in his life. But the point is hmm. they had to cancel all the shows there. Team. Interesting. 2013, they do the Van's Warp Tour and then release the album of the week about that life. 2014, they do the Vans Warp Tour and release the album Guilty Pleasure. At the 2015 Warp Tour, which they also played, there was a bunch of controversy about CJ being a homophobe and saying homophobic things, which may or may not be the case. And then in Perth, CJ was assaulted on stage by an apparent audience member and allegedly retaliated by attacking a random innocent bystander. A bunch of people then got injured at a concert in Denver, and the police 
were looking to charge him for this. So he just left the state and then posted a bunch of messages online that seemed to indicate he believes he can just leave for a while and then the whole thing will blow over like some sort of Grand Theft Auto video game rules. Uh, <laughs> My stars are going to go back down. It'll be fine. Yeah. He, so he said, yesterday's show in Denver was amazing, wild, and energetic. While it is never my intention for anybody to be injured in our crowd, sometimes the inevitable happens, especially when you guys are all turning the fuck up. Unfortunately for me, the performer, if I tell the crowd to go fucking nuts or crowd surf or start a fucking mosh pit and people get injured, I am now legally liable for inciting a riot. In the midst of yesterday's chaos and amazing show, a few people unfortunately got injured. At that point, I was told that the police may be searching for me for inciting a riot, so naturally, I dip the fuck out. I don't know about you, but I don't fuck with police or jail. I know some of you are disappointed because you feel like I ditched my signings or whatever, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I love my fans and meeting you guys is the highlight of my day. I'm just not trying to get arrested. My sincerest apologies to anyone that may have gotten hurt. My intention was to have people crowd surfing safely to the front. I don't want anyone to get hurt. So they were going to charge him and he just left Colorado. Problem I mean, solved. I wonder if they ever charged him with anything. I don't think so. I think it worked. Joke's on us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that pretty much confirms that he just didn't feel like doing signings, so he left and it was never going to be a thing. CJ then gets in a feud with Falling in Reverse's Ronnie Radke before co-headlining a tour with them and then touring with Hollywood Undead. So it's a real big reunion show here. In... <sighs> 2016, they released the album Chaos. 2017, they did the Vans Warp Tour again. 2018, at a Las Vegas show, CJ punched a security guard in the back of the head, later claiming that he did it because he thought the security guard was being too rough with audience members. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's a reasonable reaction. (laughs) CJ, of course, also has an emo-ish clothing company called Stay Sick, in which he has fun slogans on hoodies like Suck My Fuck and such. We'll get into that in the lyrics, but that's God the- <laughs> damn it. It really is a catchphrase. <laughs> it oh, is. Fucking A. <laughs> it is. In 2019, they released the album Villain. Then they fired the drummer at that point, Brian McClure, after a series of rape and other sexual misconduct allegations in 2020. But then the same year, CJ was accused by somebody named Roxy Vienna, probably a fake name, of sexual assault and coercing this person to have sex with him and grooming her when she was underaged. I think she was 17 to 19 at this time. Big alleged on that whole thing, but uh, that is the client. And then Garrett, last summer, the summer of 2020, the summer of COVID, the summer of OnlyFans. (laughs) That glorious, wonderful summer. CJ began making pornography for OnlyFans. Now, I I did not not subscribe. I don't want to give this guy any money. However, I did take a preliminary gander at his account. He has 37,000 likes, 215 pictures, 169 videos. It's apparently based out of Orlando, Florida. Florida. He goes by at Daddy Franz and has the self description, I'm a rock star that makes porn. This is where you see the unfiltered version of my life. Thanks for subscribing. So if you would like to go to OnlyFans at Daddy Franz, ladies, gentlemen, whoever, and see this guy presumably show you his wiener, <laughs> you can. And also, so crass, Tim. So crass. You make it sound so weird. He's probably jerking that dick, right? Probably, yes. Uh, speaking of, while you're on OnlyFans, feel free to see if you can find find Garrett's hidden account, I think you will be surprised at who is secretly running it. Yeah. Also, want to be clear, when he says secret, it is a secret to me as well. <laughs> oh, yes. The video cameras are a secret. The uploads are a secret. To call it unofficial is not even close to the legal definition of what you're doing to me. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Attila has an upcoming album that will be called Closure, presumably out next year. I think they've already released singles for it. It might have come out this year. Who gives a shit? God. God damn it, Tim. I'm so angry right now. I mean, we kind of need to subscribe. How much is it? Five bucks? Um, I didn't check. I think it's five bucks. I think people uh, can set their own prices. Oh, then I have no idea. Um, well, no, I take that back. I know they can set their own prices. <laughs> okay. God, I hate you. I'm very curious. Like, not, nece- not, not from a sexual perspective to be real clear, but like, is there a chance? Oh, no. He said his description says he does porn. Is there a ch- Are we going to ask, is there a chance that it's good? No. No. <laughs> Literally, okay, for two reasons. One, I don't know by what definition I would use to define good. Uh, But more importantly, nothing this guy's ever done seems to be good. Why in the world would I think fucking would be something he's good at either? But no, what I was going to say is there is a internet celebrity that 
is on OnlyFans that does not do porn, but does like a lot of what you would normally expect an Instagram model to post. Maybe a little racier, oh, but right. not, but still not porn, but they charge people for it and then they can just monetize it easily. So I was curious, like, is this guy, because he seems to suck by most most measure. Uh, so you're saying- Maybe he's just charging people to see him shirtless or something weird. He's only showing trunk. Yeah, neck. Neck at most. Stick neck, yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe like the, the root <laughs> in the abdomen area, right? Okay. So everyone's paying attention, keeping them up. And then some neck mm. at most. No, no head. And and, on, and we're not talking inches. We're what just a butthole just, guy. Just here's my- <laughs> Just here's my butthole. Yeah, it's an aggressive stance, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that would be thrilled to see this guy's asshole. But Maybe there's not this guy's. There's 37,000 people that are that at least like this. They can't all be subscribers, but yeah, but we don't know what this is. Yeah, that's true. I Maybe mean, like somebody saying, "Well, you know, we've gotten well over 37,000 likes over our lifetime, but nobody knows what we do." Oh God, no! No one even knows our real names. No, thank mm-hmm. God. General thoughts. Anyway, general thoughts. So, Tim, let's describe this music for everybody and do our very level best, despite it being just a mess. Well, okay. So, here's the th- let's let's ignore the vocals and the lyrics for the moment. Okay, yeah, just I the think music. We gotta piece it up. The music is mostly fine-ish, right? It's not good, yeah. but it is competently played. There's some decent guitar solos on here. Mm-hmm. It's if you completely replaced all the vocals and also all the lyrics, this wouldn't right. be that bad, right? Right, but Correct. Th- that's that's ten percent of the problem. Sure. I think the vocals and lyrics are why most of this audience is listening, though, which is confounding because it's ninety percent of the problem for me. Yes, absolutely. And this is something that I would like to say. I think the band would probably take this as a compliment, but I want to assure you, this is not meant as a compliment. <laughs> there was no volume at which this did not seem way too loud. Right. This this hurt my ears. Turned down to the lowest possible setting on my phone on the record that we buy every every week it was you know we cranked that way down and mm. still incredibly loud i mean i guess technically we were listening to it in a essentially an echo chamber a locked sure. metal room on a ship so that might have had something to do with it but i think that that's i've listened to it on the swim home and uh, for the yeah. most part it was still loud then yeah still too loud even over the, over the sound of uh, crashing waves and seagulls i still found this motherfucker entirely too loud. Yeah. Okay. So, th- so the music is fine. It's not my favorite. To put some words on it, let's say metalcore to new metalcore with a dash of death metal and some maybe a little hardcore. Sure. Yeah. Like you can hear all the you can hear all the like Slayer influences. You can hear the yes. metallic of it all. You can For hear sure. that they listen clearly to Slipknot at some point. Um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff, but it's it's all of that. Metalcore is a good word for it. But you can hear a lot of good bands in here. They're just doing it wrong. Sorry, they're not doing it wrong. It's just done mundanely, but it's all done pretty competently. Yeah, it's produced well. Mm -hmm. I just, the end result is confounding to me. This is more confusing to me than the fucking Gex. Oh, I don't know if it's more confusing. I understand what's happening here more, but I want it less. Okay, that's fair. Yes, I understand the motivations and narratives of this album more than a hundred Gex, but I enjoyed the Gex more. Stupid horse, I just fell out of my Porsche versus (laughs) if you want to join the party, put your middle fingers up is no contest. Absolutely. Yes. God, I want to call the lead singer. What's his name? CJ? Yes. He's just got like such a... We haven't even gotten to the lyrics yet, but he's douchebag is too generic. He's like if fuck you- boy. There it is. He's a fuck boy, Tim. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I was mincing words. He's a he's a fuck boy, but worse even still maybe. Poser fuck boy? Yeah, it's a I mean it's it's he's got a Fred Dursty thing about him. <laughs> so get the fuck out of my face. Yeah, it's great. Oh. The vocals are almost exclusively by CJ. There's three songs on here that the bassist does some screaming on, but ninety mm. percent of these, at least according to the transcribed liner notes that I read, are CJ. So he mm-hmm. is responsible for the worst part of this, which is why I focused most of the history on this guy. He's the worst. Gary. He's the heart of it, Tim. Yes, he's the heart of the beast. Okay, before we talk about lyrical content, and we're 
going to talk about it in some detail when we get to the song by song. Let's discuss the range of vocal stylings that we experience. So we have a common nomenclature throughout the rest of the album. I think it's important we align on what we mean when we use certain words. So starting with the, I'll call it a classic scream or even a high pitched scream, but very understandable to the ear. Sure. Okay. Then there is the growl. Yeah, the demon growl. The demon growl. I often call it a belch growl. Yeah. It's kind of like you're burping through through the song, <laughs> which is an odd choice. But then there's also gremlin rapping. There is. That's that. Some of that sounded like a little bit of it sounded like Eminem at points. Some of that sounded like Slipknot to me. You remember the classic film Gremlins Two, Tim? Oh, absolutely. The new batch? I've got Gremlins sure. written in my notes as well. Oh, excellent. I kept picturing during the Gremlin rap portions. The laboratory in Gremlins 2, where they all get genetically modified. So you got like the flying gremlin and the gremlin that has a fruit salad on its face and the smart gremlin. Oh fruit yeah, salad or the, one uh, the one with the uh, electricity DNA spliced in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to move past that one. That one's dumb. But <laughs> I kept picturing like the M&M DNA like falling into the gremlin mix. <laughs> and then you get the Bruce... The Bruce Gremlin, and that's where you get the Gremlin rap, because you're right. It's got a similar quick cadence to that early Eminem sound that we know and love, before everything just became him starting a lawnmower. He does something that appears to be halfway between beatboxing and the J-Devil phlegm scatting, and yeah. that might just be a description of the worst beatboxing that's ever. That's what my notes say. Um, it has a sort of phlegm scatty quality to it. But Maybe he's I think the boxing. Is, ooh, I re- now here's the problem. I want it to be phlegm. Boxing. Our <laughs> listeners want it to be phlegm boxing. We all love it. Congratulations. Excellent term. Unfortunately, that implies agency and purpose <laughs> to the style. And in this case, I think it nail on the head, just really bad beatboxing. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying though. Okay. Let's get a general rainbow to go over the lyrical content. We're going to get into the detail, but let's just get that overarching, Tim, to you. What is the goal, purpose, and strive of these young boys? They would like young men. They would like to party and also fuck up their enemies. Well put. Perhaps they want to rage. Yes. The interesting thing about this. So this was obviously clearly written by a particularly edgy twelve-year-old. Oh yeah. But it has no point of view really. In the same way that the worst SoundCloud rapists kind of fall into this trap, where it's just it's trying to be rebellious and villainous and against everything that you, whoever they happen to be talking to at the moment. Is for, but like, depending on who they're talking to in that moment, that could vary by like as much as 180 degrees because they're just trying to be contrarian. Yes, that is the big theme here. Boy, Tim, we've really hit all the high points. I think we can wrap it up. This might be the quickest episode ever because, guys, it's a 37 minute album. Yes. The other thing, though, to be because we have to say this up front, I think we're both aware that this is a little bit tongue in cheek. It's not necessarily to meant to be taken seriously. They're, they're trying to be offensive for the sake of being offensive, and I get that, right? These lyrics are meant to freak out the squares, and as a noted square, I just want to say, I'm not offended by this. It's not it's not the, the language, the ideas in and of themselves. They're not offensive. I'm not offended. It's just bad. You yeah, know? It's, it's actually kind of the opposite of intimidating and uh, and offensive. Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's embarrassing. It's desperate. It feels like it the eighth grader that's trying to fit in with like his older brother's friends that are, you know, like sophomores in high school. And so- <sighs> and God damn you. He's, you are, you, this is like the fourth thing you've just basically read verbatim out of my notes. I skewed it a little older. Like the, I said, the entire album sounds like a high school student describing what they think college is going to be like based on movies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. But even with those movies, they're going a little bit too far. It's, it's kind of like, imagine a high schooler that goes to like a college party and comes back and is trying to describe to his friends what it was like. And, you know, he yeah. fucked 37 ladies there. Like it was sure. awesome. It, just yeah. no. None of this no. is believable. It's a little sad. Sure. And I mean, but you know what? We're going to get way, way into it here. Anything else you want to say about this before we dive in? Should we go through the list of apologetics covers? There's no, <laughs> no. way. <laughs> If you've come up with some, Tim, I will entertain it, but I <laughs> want you to know no one here is fooled. That's fair. I haven't. I just I just was hoping that I would fool at least someone. I mean, hey, we got a lot of stupid listeners. Yeah, I bet you got somebody. <laughs> 
And we appreciate you. <laughs> yes, they're our favorite listeners, the stupid ones. Absolutely. Track number one, Middle Fingers Up. I mean, that really sets the tone, doesn't it? Yeah. This kind of encompasses all of like the musical styles and the vocal styles we're going to get. But it also, I mean, we get the lyrics kind of encompass everything we're going to get too. Because it, it goes from, I want to party to uh, fuck the haters to I might kill a man today. Uh, back and forth. Like, <laughs> it does really kind of bing pong around a bit. And that's uh, kind of what the things- whole album does. So... That is what's fun about it, if there is anything. It does occasionally and casually approach horrific heights and then just abandon those ideas to go back to talking about bitches and drinks. Yes. We start off with some beatboxing and white guy rapping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, motherfucker, listen up. This is for the fucking homies. Steady giving no fucks. If you want to join the party, put your middle fingers up. And when the music fucking hits, you better jump, jump, jump. It has also this beatboxing, though, behind it that is of the quality of somebody that's Mocking EDM, it's it's basically somebody back there going, nts, 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 nts. <laughs> and it's it's sad. It's so bad. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Now, what's unfair to you and me, trapped in our parabolic steel chamber of horrors on the Atlantic? Ooh, that's that a good delivery, band name. Parabolic chamber of horrors. Done. Yeah, at least a good album name. Anyway, the delivery of that opening verse is nothing like the rest of the album. <laughs> you can tell what's happening and then it gets so weird. So we get high pitch screaming with a growl harmonize. I agree with the delivery what we we should just mention before you read the lyrics. The first was about people at a party jumping around, flicking people off and having a good time. That's yeah, what the just intro is. Tossing your cares away. Absolutely. Carry on. <laughs> right. Then we turn our attention to these lyrics. Ignorance is this. We don't fuck with pussy haters. Put your money where your mouth is or you can suck my dick, you fucking traitor. Hmm. It's like they tried to combine the attitude of Slipknot and the attitude of the goofiest parts of Limp Biscuit into the same song. And it just doesn't make any sense. It's really weird. And of course, I, I wish I could remember because so much of it is growled, but we'll we'll get to some. Then we get to get up, let the music consume your soul and say, fuck it. When you're fucking here, nothing fucking matters. Which is the exact same sentiment as Gloria Estefan's the rhythm is going to get you. True. Congratulations, boys. You're really raging now. That Miami Sound Machine knew how to party. Yes. Then the song continues. Give no fucks. That's the motto. We are only here to take over this whole planet. And I'm confused. I th- Because, well, what's about to happen, things are about to get really out of control. But up to this moment, Tim, this was a party. You and your boys throwing your fingers in the air and saying, we don't care. Yes, absolutely. And they're going to be the biggest band in the world. And that's something worth celebrating. They're here to take over this planet. And then we get, fuck the world. Rape this earth of every single thing it's got. If you really want it, you should take it all. Grab hold of everything you want and tell the haters suck my fucking cock. Which is a wild turn there. So now I, I got to thinking, Tim, who could be behind this? Because this song is stupid. And there's always somebody, you know, pretend, well, there's not always somebody, but potentially somebody could be backing this. And I thought, fuck the world. Rape the earth of every single thing it's got. If you really want it, you should take it all. Oh, God damn it. It's like free market capitalism and uh, the right wing values of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And if other people want to be successful, they need to go out, reach out and take it. So this, I put to you, Tim, this song might be secretly a new neo-capitalism metalcore song, or as I call it, new Neo Capcore. Oh, or I like if you're that. you're short on time, new Capcore. Hmm. So this isn't going to turn into another one of your screeds against fracking, is it? I mean, I agree no, 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 with you. I just can't listen time. to it again. Jesus. No, no, no. I don't have my charts. I don't have okay. my presentation ready. So we are destroying the environment for our own greed in this verse. And then there's this weird profane, but still kind of, <laughs> it's like a motivational cat poster section where he- It, it gets real weird. It changes to, listen up, you can- can do anything you want in life. Just don't be a fucking bitch. Put your middle fingers up. Break it down. This isn't the time to let anyone hold you back. Fuck the world. And let your actions do the talking for you. Eliminate the bullshit from your life. You've got to let ignorance be on your side. I don't understand that last line, but the rest seems like motivational speaker nonsense, man. Yeah. Like, yo, it, we go from fuck the world, rape the earth, to at best a no fear shirt. <laughs> yeah. And, and 
at worst, uh, a hang in there, baby. Now, let me address what I think is really odd. So I'm going to read the last part of the song again, and I'm going to focus in on a line that actually I think is quite clever. Fuck the world. Let your actions do the talking for you. So far, this, to your point, Tim, this is run-of-the-mill advice. It's not bad advice. You know, ignore others and just, you know, do your thing. Eliminate the bullshit. That's always a good idea. You've got to let ignorance be on your side. I think this is the smartest thing we've maybe heard from any song on this show. Uh, maybe that lobster martini asshole thing had a couple of things for it. But anyway, ignorance is the most powerful tool a human being has. I have only been successful in my life because I didn't realize how ignorant I was to the stakes, import, or or even the fact that I was in a circumstance I should not have been in. So right? you like want to almost weaponize the Dunning-Kruger effect in your own life? No. Well, yes. Yes. It, it's not quite Dunning-Kruger. It's because I'm not like forming my own reality based on nonsense. It's more just being oblivious to the stakes of a situation can make you more successful because you're not concerned because you don't realize how important it is. Hmm. Okay. It's like all those triathlons you signed me up for and you just dropped me off at six o'clock in the morning and you don't tell me how far I have to go or- nope. Here's your bib. Here's your number. I'll see you at the finish line with a glass of apple juice. And if you don't finish, you don't get a ride home. Hmm. How far is, have you, uh, oh, never mind. I haven't given you the, <laughs> never mind. I almost spoiled something for April. <laughs> what? We'll see. <laughs> Nothing. What's don't worry happen? about it. I don't know. Start running, bitch. You've got <laughs> quite a race coming up. Oh no. Anyway, uh, you know, I think we pretty much did it, Tim. You ready for the next one? Yep. Track number two, Hellraiser. <laughs> There's some pretty decent guitar in this song. Yeah. Uh, for a moment, especially in the beginning, we fade in on uh, a riff that sounds remarkably like the opening to Black Betty by Ram Jam, uh, <laughs> or even possibly Life in the Fast Lane. But then, Tim, yeah, then the every... whole song is growl song. Yes. Every line in this song is sung in the dumbest possible voice. And- Here we go, motherfucker, go! Yeah. This is the problem. What? With very small exceptions, I'm, I mean, I'm talking a verse every three or four songs, I had to read the, I have to trust genius yeah. lyrics on what everything is, what what's being said here, because I honestly could not understand a word of this fucking album. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. It's and, so stupid. But these are definitely lyrics that could only come from a 20 year old white guy trying to sound like really cool and tough, though. It's all over the map, just like the last one. <laughs> yeah. It's, here we motherfucking go. Fuck that. We raise hell. I'll tear your soul apart. Fuck pigs. What? We raise hell. Lol is some the pack. We never listen. We live our lives above the law. We're fucking villains. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Referring to yourself as a villain is hilarious. It is. Because it doesn't necessarily mean you're a criminal or an outlaw. You could just be a bad guy. Yeah. And I think, to be clear, I don't want to disparage young CJ. I do think, though, that he's a bad guy. Oh, okay. Like, Personal I think opinion. On not a... based on, you're not saying anybody's saying it. You're just saying, personally, you think he's a bad guy. Right. And I don't mean, I don't think he's done, he's done objectively bad things. I don't think he's done documented bad things. He probably has, but you know, I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about <laughs> deep down as a person, who he is when he really sits there alone, just him and of course the Lord. I think he's a bad person. Okay. You know what? I don't don't disagree. I think I co-signed that one. Seems like a bad guy. Fuck everything you say. I'm here to smash it. Straight from the depths of hell. If you, if you can't hang, then fucking quit. We raise hell. Always disorderly. Rebels with no defeat. Fuck with our team if you dare. Fuck all authority. Authority, rep the minority is okay. Rep the minority. Right. In any situation, no matter what, they're going to side with the people that are numerically least in the group. Okay. But- Which isn't great. There's a minority of people that think that uh, the earth is flat. Yeah. That's a bigger minority than I'd like. Yeah, it is. So I think that they want to hide behind this. Like their, a lot of their merchandise is, I went to the website of whatever the fuck, I forget what I said it was called, Sick Puppy or Sick shit or something. This Ugh. guy's dumbass hoodie website. And a lot of it is this, if you don't like gay people, then fuck you. Which is fair. That's a perfectly acceptable sentiment that I agree with. But they do a lot of this, I have a black friend thing. That, yeah, you know, it's that's, like cover for them to say all the other shit they say. Exactly, yes. So you, you say a whole bunch of like uh, inflammatory bullshit and then you throw yeah. occasionally in there a you know, I'm pro-gay marriage. And good. That's good. You should be. However, I feel like you're just using that as a crutch. Yeah, you can't hate me for all this other stuff. Check out this one thing I did once. Let's see. 
I've had enough of your shit to last me for a lifetime. I stay out of line. <laughs> now, I'm a badass and you're a fucking bitch. I've had enough of your shit to last me a lifetime. Is this suddenly about daddy? Are we got some daddy issues here? Who are we talking about? Maybe. I mean, I can't imagine this guy has a good relationship with his parents. It doesn't seem so. But maybe he does. Don't want to slander the man. The song continues. Rock and roll was invented for the wicked. Leave your Bibles at home under the bed. Uh, okay, I don't... Because rock and roll was invented for the wicked. Nope. Uh, leave your Bibles at home under the bed. I was going to agree that, actually. What, wait, what? Uh, everybody knows that all the best bands are affiliated with Satan. No, that is true. Okay, but leave your Bibles at home under the bed implies people are showing up with Bibles being like, <laughs> when, do you, when do you need these? <laughs> Aussie, when did the Bible happen? I love the happen? idea that, <laughs> yeah. What? Going to a rock show, got my Bible. It's a King James. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I've got a second one in case it's cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's it's, see. Again, it's one of those things of just like, no, we don't like the Bible. We're cool. Which, objectively cool to not like the Bible. However, objectively <laughs> uncool to brag about it. Yeah. You know, (laughs) objectively cool to not like the Bible, but subjectively Uh, uncool to like the Bible, which kind of is why it's so cool to like the Bible, because you're like uh, turning into like a countercultural kind of thing. Sure. You're practically a street gang. (laughs) Uh, You know what? Track number three, Rageaholics. I feel like, Tim, at this point, the listener, and some of you I know, I've heard your viewers. Congratulations. Find the feed. But I am assuming our mostly listeners at this point are going, you know, man, this is a short album. Those are short songs. Each one of those was three minutes or less. And we're only on track number three. What is happening? And the answer, dear listener, we don't know. (laughs) It just takes so long with this band. Yeah. When we first listened to this, the first time we put this record on, this, we're like 83 minutes into it before we get to Rageaholics. I don't know how. Yeah, how's that even possible? It, Both of us with terrific nosebleeds, like yes. uh, stra- some sort of Stranger Things situation going on when we listen to this, at least the first several times. It may have had something to do with uh, the pressure, the pressure in the hull of the Maybe. boat we were trapped in. <laughs> Tough to say. Yeah. But Garrett, they are rebels who just want to party and also spell. <sighs> CJ says, yeah, we're just rebels without a cause. Coming straight from the capital of the South, fuck yeah, hot-headed, and we can't deny a new adventure. Join or die, because this shit's about to get reckless. I guess they're gonna kill you if you don't join the party. Take a look around, and welcome to my fucking city. Me and all my fucking goons, we party hard, stay shitty. Popping bottles, rolling blunts, we never give a motherfuck. A-T-L-A-N-T-A, this city's dope and rad as fuck, bitch. We're all just rageaholics. Well put. Spelling. Uh, I mean... (laughs) Folks, this is what we're dealing with this week. It, uh, at least you have the pleasure. And Tim, allow me for the first time ever to compliment your voice. It is so much better delivered from your mouth than the screeching harpy that is CJ or McChubbins. Yeah, I agree. Hey, we're party addicts, rageaholics, diabolical badass. Don't get it twisted. Just addicted to this lifestyle. Tim, they can't quit it. They don't know how to quit it. Yeah, I think this song's a, a really wasted opportunity because typically rageaholic is somebody that is addicted or or frequently angry, right? Yes. And, and that's what I was hoping this song was going to be about. Sure. This is about somebody that is addicted to raging, as in partying, which is, right. again, objectively cool. Here's the problem. They could have made this song about both. They could yes. Have, it could have because like- some, who doesn't enjoy getting blackout drunk and destroying a room? Absolutely. You could rage and then rage. Yeah. Double rage. Rage. Rage squared. It's hip to rage squared. Tim, I, I I keep thinking like this album is the musical equivalent of you should have fucking been there last night, man. <laughs> I drank like seven beers before we fucking left, and then we got to the bar. I had two Long Island iced teas because Rick couldn't finish his, and then fucking Sam came over and we had to do fucking Jaeger shots. So like I had like. 28 beers and 11 shots before we even really got to the bars. Yes. And then there was the sex with all the women. And oh, sure. You, you this b- fucking bitch, man. She was so <laughs> wet for me. Yeah. Tim, no. Fucking Tim. Tim. You should have fucking been there, dude. Because we got there and you know how the bros are. Immediately they start scoping for strange, right? But this fucking cunt comes up to me and you could tell this slit was <laughs> 
all okay. over me okay. immediately. Jesus Christ, you what? have what? This, bro, it bro, seems too you natural. Were it there, seems bro. too natural you coming were out of your there, face, bro. Garrett, check it out. I fucked that bitch, and then I cried in her arms for three hours afterwards. You should have been there, bro. Gross. Then this uh, song. Yeah, back th- to this. This song though takes another turn because randomly they give advice to younger listeners or perhaps those that are just new to the Attila crew and they need uh, about the need for temperance at first to build up a tolerance to the partying lifestyle they will cer- certainly experience. Yeah, you got to ease into that pool, yeah. Tim. He says, take in a little at a time and you'll do just fine. If you can take it to another level on another night, we get trippy like some kind of delusion. Just understand where the shit. He's saying, don't rush into it. You have your whole life to learn to party like CJ. Yeah, he's a professional rager, Tim. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, Good stuff. Do you think Let's that see. Rageaholics was ever floated as a possible name for the Attila hangers on or or crew. Oh, as the uh, like we have our suckers. Yeah, um, entirely possible. I think one of the most embarrassing moments on this album comes when he does the demon growl voice, but but he, what he's saying is essentially internet slang stolen from Valley Girls. The- <laughs> it's hilarious. Is that the? <laughs> Yes. What Garrett said yeah. is DGAF, fuck you. Uh, don't give a fuck, fuck you. Uh, but again, in the demon voice, which is right. very tough and also quite cool. Uh, it's, it's, I, I'm doing it more articulately than they do because I don't have the microphone in my mouth. So that's kind of wraps it, wouldn't you say? Yep. Track number four, Back Talk. Here, I did a Google search just to make sure I understood what backtalk meant. Okay, uh, in, in, enlighten me in case I'm not hip. So backtalk is defined as rude or cheeky remarks made in res- in reply to somebody in authority. So it's it's talking back okay. to somebody disrespectfully, like a, a parent or a teacher or something like that. Good to see it has not changed since I was about nine. Absolutely. They did not Google it because they mean talking Over behind her? someone's back. Yes, oh. making fun of somebody, <laughs> right? And it's, I think they just used the word wrong in the title of the song. Let's get into it. He rapped a little bit like Anthony Kiedis in the opening to this. Uh, I can hear your voice through the grapevine. Secrets don't exist, not in my time. Always talking shit, but you can't hide. Run in your mouth like a bitch. I assume he means that in the age of the internet, it's harder to not get caught talking shit, maybe. But again- Yeah, presumably. Or just, you know, people are gossipy. If you start talking shit about people and you do it in front of the wrong person, it will get back to that person. Sure, but he specifically says, secrets don't exist, not in my time. Oh, so, that's a good point. But here's the problem. Because he says that, it implies some sort of connection to the internet, which again has the answer to what the word backtalk means. So fuck him. Well, don't worry about it, Tim. He's got it. It's backtalk. It's a play on words. Shut up. Fair <laughs> enough. Backtalk, getting the best of you, bitch. We're going to fuck you up. Cowards trying to hide their face, but I think you're out of luck today. You better hope I never find you. Now, let's see who's the bigger asshole. You want attention? Here we go. If I find you, I will kill you. Now, (laughs) I was going to break that up a little bit because it starts potentially slightly softer with the back talk gets the best of you, bitch. We're going to fuck you up. You know, it's just a a very light threat of assault. But as things progress, we get all the way to, I will find you. I will kill you. Now, what I love about this is this sounds like somebody who's just had enough. (laughs) Like it's a, like it's a mouthy coworker or just somebody who doesn't shut the fuck up. And they're like, you know what? First, it was like, hey, I fucking hate Steve. Now it's, I'm going to beat the shit out of Steve. And now we might have some sort of purge scenario where he's like, <laughs> I'm going to find him. I'm going to fucking kill him. Yeah. But that's the thing and, because it then de escalates, right? Huge guitar solo. Yeah. And when it comes back, it's saying, like, this shit has to end. Too bad your life sucks. <laughs> yeah. But everybody doesn't he say just after the solo, everybody hates you. He says it at, at least at some point. But yeah, he, I, he yeah. says things like, everybody hates you. This shit has to end. Too bad your life sucks. But it, after the solo, it has a much less threatening and much more whiny yes. aspect to it. <laughs> and then we get the last verse. And we really uh, get some insight into what we're in for in the rest of this album. Because again, oh, there's so much left. It's just it's just threats and weird nonsense. He says, you're just another fucking bitch that I want to punch in the face. Your ass is jealous of the shit that comes out of your mouth. I don't know exactly what that means. I think <laughs> your mouth is forming such delightful 
fecal shit that your ass is jealous of the formation? Your your colon has fecal envy? <laughs> That's funnier than what they mean. I don't know exactly what they mean, but I like it. Your ass is jealous of the shit that comes out of your mouth. You should just replace it with a dick. It would only make more sense. You fucking ugly faggot. This is the quality of lyrics we're going to get for the rest of this album. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to we're going to move at a healthy clip gang, and that is because we've pretty much hit all the high notes. There's a few special moments in a few of these songs that we're really going to dig into, but by and large, you get it. They scream, they growl, they're awesome, they're going to get the haters, they take things too far, and then they use analogies that don't make a lot of sense. Like, why would replacing somebody's mouth with a dick make any sense? It should just replace it. I think it. they're replacing the shit with a dick. Suck a dick. I'm surprised they didn't just come out and say it. They do later. <laughs> yeah. Suck my fuck. Uh, you know what's weird? <laughs> they have all these insults. That last verse you read is all insults. But then they include the word ugly. Yeah. Like all those other hateful things. But then just like, also, you are objectively unattractive. Well, that's the thing. That's the one that hurts the most. Because- True. And I, I think this may be stealing something from Doug Stanhope here. But, you know, you can, you can, uh, I'll fucking kill you. You suck. You're, yeah, fuck you, buddy. But when you overhear somebody after all that being like, man, that guy's fucking ugly. Like that's the one that you're just like- like, oh shit. <laughs> Can't fix ugly team. <laughs> yeah. It's that true. might be the t-shirt. <laughs> Track number five. Not a song. Leave a message. Yo, it's Franz. I'm busy as fuck. Leave a message or something. Front, it's Mike. So this is sad. This is the sort of thing they felt that they needed to include some supporting evidence for their previous brags. They needed like somebody to reference on their CV about how hard they are. So we get this obviously <laughs> fake voicemail. Small note, small note, Tim. Small note. If you're a rock and roll star or a uh, noted party animal, don't have a don't have a party resume. <laughs> I so I disagree. I think that if you are a rock star star, you should have a well-defined CV in case for, for those record labels, you know, you want to have like a nice cover sheet, have maybe mm. each individual album listed with a track listing, maybe how well, well sure. it's sold okay. so far. I think you, I think you really, and, and, and here's the thing. You were describing an agent. An agent has these things. No, or think, a lawyer. You're t- describing a business. <laughs> Tim, were you a lawyer? Is that what you used to be? You're describing an entertainment lawyer. I don't think so. No, I don't either. It, that does it's not sound right. It You're not great at arguments. right, though. I think I'm great. Sure. Well, anyway. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, we can't get bogged down in what Tim used to do. Listeners write in, hateponmail at gmail.com. Yeah. What okay. did Tim do? Let me ask this, because I've had a lot of propofol-induced brain damage over the past, I don't know, three, four years since we've been doing this show. Did any of you know me beforehand? Because I have no memories before January 2018 whatsoever. So mm. total blank. Hash- yeah, write in, hatepodmail at gmail.com. Did you know Tim? Who was Tim? Who was Gordon? His name Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so we get this obviously fake voicemail from a crisis actor playing a record label suit and telling them the new songs are just too extreme and wild yep. for the label. I, I don't even know if it's worth reading. Nope. This. I was gonna. I, I would. I, the highest form of disrespect I think we can pay, aside from all the hurtful things we've said and will say, is to not read their dumb sketch. Okay. Track number six about that. Life. Titular track, Gino. We go back to rapping for a few lines before the death I'm a growl. Bad motherfucker with a fucking role model. Oh, God <laughs> damn, I hate this. It's a real Bloodhound Gang song. I kind of liked how, how cool you do are. it. I think you should do another couple lines like that. Well, when we get to the Gremlin raps, I will do a full Gremlin rap for I'm you. A bad but, motherfucker, uh, not a fucking role model. Fuck a church, hit a bong, then go smash a fucking bottle. Yeah, exactly. Got a few sluts to help me roll a few blunts, and they never question me because they know I hate cunts. Now, let's dissect this in 2021. This was the 20. 2013 album, right? Yep. All right. He's a bad motherfucker. We'll see. Not a fucking role model. By today's standards, most celebrities have made it abundantly clear to do pretty much the opposite of what they do. Fuck church. Religion has dropped precipitously over the last 7, 20, 50 years in America. Not that unusual. Hit a bong. 30 plus states now legalize at least medicinal marijuana. Not so crazy. Then go smash a fucking bottle. Who doesn't like breaking things? Absolutely. This guy's not a rebel. If you ever want to get Garrett a 
really good Christmas present, buy him like a four to eight pack of those neon lights. Yes, the tubes. Yes. I don't know what they're mm. called. I don't install don't the lights. Also, we don't have any of these in our home because Garrett would smash them. The point is, <laughs> he will hurl them off a balcony and- yeah. uh, It's pretty cool. Yeah. They vaporized him. Don't yeah. breathe that in. Noxious gas. Mm. That really will kill you. Do not breathe the inside of those tube lights. Is it possible that's why I have no memories? Nope. That's the propofol. No. Uh, the song continues. And of course, we do go back to a combination of screaming and growling. But he says, eat my words and swallow my sentences. That is ridiculous. But he... <laughs> Eat my words and swallow my sentences. That's like a, a Tim. Do you were you in country for Hans and Franz on SNL? No, Ugh. it was a SNL sketch with Dana Carvey and Kevin Nealon where they were workout aficionados that were a take on Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was Austrian fitness enthusiast. But all of it was hear me now and see me later, shit like that. But eat my words and smell my sentences is <laughs> dangerously like close to a smell. joke. It's oh, way right, funnier. swallow is weirder. So eat my. Words, swallow my sentence. It, Go ahead. It also comes off like he's doing some workbook, like a child's first metaphor, you know? Oh, and these it's are, just a Mad Libs. Yeah. The, the worst Mad Libs ever. Yeah. Uh, here we go, you fucking asshole. Living off the dirt on my shoes, does it keep you alive? I'm about that life. Yeah. So we've got somebody who's a hanger on, I guess. I guess. Uh, I, let's keep going. Let's see if it makes more sense. Hold me accountable. Oh, God. Hold on. So I, I can't do it the way it's done on the album. Album and it makes me hoarse to do it, but I'm going to read these lines and then I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do it how it's done on the album only because the content and the delivery are so juxtaposed that it, it almost makes it borderline entertaining. So he sure. says, hold me accountable. You're itching for the money that I use to wipe my ass. Here's some shitty Benjamins. Too bad they'll never help you buy some fucking class. It's terrible writing. First of all, that's horrible. But just the phrase, hold me accountable, delivered as, hold me <laughs> how could anybody, and we'll get into how it did, but how could anybody in the studio be like, yep, this is going to work. <laughs> this is going to work. You know what, guys? Let's, let's, let's name the album about that life. You guys are great. <laughs> we yeah. get then what I can only assume passes for a kind of patriotism in CJ's mind. <laughs> he says, I like a bad bitch. She fucks me all night. Then she counts my money while I'm on my PlayStation. Every moment always filled with sensation. Always fucking blazing. America's my nation. I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. I'm about this fucking life. I hustle hard and then I play. Put your lips on my dick so you can taste success. That's the shit. Swallow and don't spit. So he's a badass killer who sings about how much sex he gets and how much he likes PlayStation, all because, Garrett, as we all know, and as our Canadian and European and South American and Russian listeners mm. know, America is the best country. Wow. Interesting. Ah, uh, no comment. <laughs> what I was going to say is this once again seems to be circling, at least slightly, the drain of capitalism, Tim. He works hard for the money, and then he enjoys the fruits of his labor, once again supporting my theory that this band, my might be some sort of weird CIA-backed new Neo Capcore. Ah, like all news anchors. Hmm, except for two. I think you'll be surprised which two. Whisper them to me. Oh, I was surprised, Garrett. That's. I hope those on the feed can read your lips. I hope they can't. That's fair. If that gets out, I will be killed. Oh, oh no. Don't tell anyone. Did I not mention that? Jesus Christ, don't tell anyone. I will be killed. Only, they will know who said. That's true, because you are much. presumably the only one that knows that. Now we get to when he starts singing like a goddamn gremlin. For real. <clears throat> oh, right. Let me tell you something. Tighter than a virgin. Making money like a surgeon and we stack it to the roof. <laughs> because my pockets start hurting. Bowing and hawing and talking over like I'm stalling. Got a few you fucks, but I don't give them to anyone. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. Tighter than a virgin <laughs> I'm like a surgeon. You know, we stack it to the roof because my pockets are hurting. What I, Here's my happening. theory. I think he got coerced into being the vocalist. Just everyone, no one else could sing. He can't play any instruments. He wanted to be in the band. So he said, sure, I'll sing. Realized he couldn't sing. And so he's doing all this to obscure the fact that he cannot sing. K kudos to him. If I give him any compliment at all, congratulations on making this a band because it's a weird Curb your enthusiasm, st 
standoff between one guy who completely lied on his rock and roll resume and cannot sing. Tim, these might exist. And the band all looking at each other going, this is terrible, right? (laughs) (laughs) And wondering who's going to crack first. And neither did. And they made a hit album. (laughs) What the fuck's happening? I think it's because repeatedly on this album, he gives his catchphrase something that we can all rally behind. Uh Suck my fuck. Right. After chastising somebody, remains unclear who, I heard Stalin in there somewhere, for being classless the entire song, despite gremlin rapping. Let me tell you something. He says, holy shit, I guess I'm really just about that life. Suck my fuck. That needs to be sung exclusively in a Fred Durst voice. Suck my fuck. Yeah, I know, I feel it. Think think about it. Why is he so whiny? Anyway, (laughs) that's the, so my point, of course, what classier way to demonstrate just how much better you are than someone else than by the phrase, suck my fuck. That is literally the exact phrase a seven-year-old comes up with after learning both the words suck and fuck. Yeah, they rhyme. Awesome. Right. Congratulations, you're a rock star. Track number seven, Thug Life. It's odd that this song, Thug Life, could only have been written by a 20-year-old lame white guy. Honestly, Tim, I have a very difficult time distinguishing it from About That Life. Yeah, it's the same thing. There, that's the thing. All these songs are the same thing. This is the SoundCloud rapist problem where they're not really about anything. There's verses that could be interchanged between all the songs. There's, mm-hmm. it's, because here it's less braggy, kinda. It's less braggy about material possessions for the most part, but there's a lot of bragging about fucking. There's a lot of like, I could beat anyone's ass. You're a bitch. Yeah. And there's some Let's sucking and talk. A yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of sucking it. So, opens with a hard suck. Suck it when I'm on the mic. Shut up, motherfucker. You never wanted to be about that life, so go cry to your mama. Cool. Yeah, somebody roll another. I'm getting high on some ignorant shit, and I can't keep my feet on the ground. Is he admitting this is all ignorant nonsense? I think other people have the ignorant nonsense, and he is just experiencing it, knowing that he is better than all of them. He is uh, rising above it, if you will. More gremlin rapping. Take it or leave it or fuck it. I don't give a damn if you like it or not. Fine ass bitch is always gonna suck it. Thug life, bitch. Yeah. Uh, I've lived it. I know it. Sure. Stop it. Rewind it. Can't bang it if you never try it. I don't even know what that means. Is that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? (laughs) Is that what I'm hearing? 100% of the vagina shots, yes. Well, sure. We all know shots is a euphemism for that tang, as you like to say. I do. Song continues. (laughs) Thug life. <laughs> That's me. You are thinking of me. Listeners obviously can picture Tim off mics aggressively talking about Tang. Fits his personality. <laughs> anyway, song continues. Thug life always stuck in a mindset of delinquence. Fuck you. We just got to get rowdy and we'll never be stopped. Now you'll notice, Tim, I tripped over those words and my note here, such odd phrasing. It's like a translation from like Estonian to Spanish to English. Always stuck in a mindset of delinquence. <laughs> what? What? And it's not delinquents. It's not a mindset of delinquents. Well, here's it's the, the thing. mindset of a delinquent. It may or may not be because it's uh, impossible to understand. Yeah, 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 you can't tell fair. what he's saying. That's fair. And then we get to the end of the song and he says, come and break the law with me. Villains are invincible in every degree. Criminal minds paralyzed, forged by the ashes of Cush Blunts. That is objectively bad advice. Sure. And of course he growls all of that. But I'm curious, Tim, up to this moment, we've done an excellent job of characterizing, nay, defining what this life is and how they are, in fact, about it. But now it just kind of sounds like they might be criminals. Well, they want you to think so. Sure. Yeah, because they've, they've, all those people he threatened to kill, mm-hmm. he killed them. Nice. <laughs> Track number eight, Break <laughs> Shit. This sounds like a really bad Slipknot ripoff. Oh, um, yeah. Because you get those quick raps, somewhat low in the mix. It kind of fits. This song is maybe the most honest on the album, and I'll explain why. It opens with disregard authority. Fuck the law. I've been to every fucking city, and I've seen it all. If you've got a fucking problem, let the whole world know. Break every fucking thing that you see at this show. So that message there is throw a temper tantrum if you are unhappy. Yes, absolutely. Act out and break things. I do love the phrasing disregard authority, though, because it reminds me of that Joseph Ducrow portrait meme, you know, the disregard authority, acquire no. bitches or whatever. Right, right. Um, uh, let's he- see. 
advocates for murder and then maybe later genocide, I think. Oh, um, yeah. It gets really creepy. This is one of those times where he says something that I think in his mind makes it okay to say the rest of this stuff because he says, punch a fucking bully in the goddamn face. Okay. Probably shouldn't advocate for punching people either direction, but like, I, I understand what he's saying, right? He stand up yep. for, stand up against bullies. Sure. Sure. Or just hit him with a brick or two, just in case they decide they want to fuck with you and do it all again. You put the madness to an end. So I believe it's a <laughs> less gun related, but more brick related sort of Columbine situation of murdering your bully, which, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. And I want to make sure we remain very respectful. So tread lightly. But did you just say like a Columbine like situation with bricks? Got to stay respect- respectful here, Tim. So are you picturing, let's let's just take it out of a school. That's just wrong. You're picturing a, a mass casualty event instigated by a man with a sack of bricks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Carry or not on. necessarily a sack of bricks, one or two in each hand. And he's very accurate. Yeah. I'm imagining he's not even throwing them. He's just, it's like having He's a, bashing. Yeah, but it's like having a roll of nickels in your hand. He's not hitting you with the brick. He's hitting you with his hand. It's Ooh. just to add weight to his punch. See, I think, I don't want to put myself in the mind of madness, but let's just suppose for a moment I am running about some sort of area of seeking vengeance via brick. I'm still going to hit brick side first. First. Otherwise, I think that's really going to hurt my hands. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not advocating for any of this. But uh, if you sure, I'm just saying. I think that's what sure. they're saying. Interesting. Okay. You know, you're not wrong. He definitely. It just. It's got a bit of a Joker feel, and I don't mean the live action. <laughs> oh dear. It's, it's got more of an animated series. Just like you punch that bully right in the face. <laughs> Hit it with a brick or two. I don't care. <laughs> like it's it's very like well that escalated quickly. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, but it escalates further because he says, "Release your inner demons and show me what the fuck you've got." Total extermination. Fuck everybody. Wreck this place. Fuck it. I've got an anger problem. This is how it gets fixed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Later, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> because of the way it's coupled, I know he doesn't mean it this way, but it sounds like he's like total extermination. Fuck everybody. Wreck this place. Fuck it. I I've got an anger problem. And- <laughs> And this is how I this is this is how I get it yeah. out. I apologize. This, it, They're yeah. just words, guys. Yeah, it's this song. The writing it out kind of is, helps him. It's his process of releasing that mm-hmm. anger. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I write it so I don't do it. You know, it's my muse. Yeah. Then we get giant guitar riffs out of nowhere, and then my favorite part of the entire album. Tim, did you happen to get a bit of a sounds like mm. in this song in particular? There's a speech given. Oh yes, and that speech sounds shockingly similar to the dispassionate, muted, telephone-like tones of a young man named Cake. (laughs) They're always trying hard just to push you down, but when it's all said and done, you're gonna run this town. You hurt their pride in front of everyone, so finish the job. You poured the gasoline, so set it off. Now, granted, Cake has never implied that you should burn somebody to death. Well, we've only listened to the one album. That's true. I haven't heard the entire collection, but it starts off very, they're always trying hard just to push you down. (laughs) It's like, Oh, wait, we're caking. We're full caking here in the middle of an album. And you know what? I'm going to give them a couple of points just for surprising me. Who expects that? Uh, Let's see. Smash their fucking face. Watch them suffer just like they did to you, but make it worse. Retaliation (laughs) is a must. They caused an issue and violence will solve it all this time. This is irresponsible even by our show standards. (laughs) My God. uh, uh, I'm going to move right on. Jesus Christ. Track number nine. Give me and lies with a dollar sign. This starts off sounding like it's going to be a Limp Biscuit song intro, which makes sense given the dollar sign. It's right. got lasers, it's got low-key record scratches, and they just, the gimmicks and lies, gimmicks and lies, you're a goddamn fool if you trust in disguise. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, they say that 80 times. Yep. And then, okay, we're going to move real, because this is a nothing song where they basically just say what I said for about a minute. But then yeah, they say, <laughs> give me something like, and it transitions into the next song, Call Out. Out. 
I love it that the last song ends with give me something like, and you would expect that to lead into something that they're proud of, or at least mm. not completely fall into its on its face, because this song begins with the, the phlegm scatting, the beatboxing, whatever the fuck this is supposed to be, and it's super- Phlegm scatting is above. It, it that's goes, true. It, yeah. This is way below. This is some of the worst beatboxing I've ever heard. Scat beating? No, Beat that's scatting. a different thing. Anyway, it's very anticlimactic and it's terrible. And then the song is basically in the vein of Guns N' Roses's Get in the Ring. It's calling out the haters and enemies, sometimes by name, including some enemies of this very show like Ronnie Radke. That's right. This is where he just lists everybody he hates. Yes. So this is the one I think that got them all the homophobic accusations or criticism or whatever, because this song, there's a lot of dick sucking going on in this song. Yeah. There's a lot of requests for dick sucking. Yeah. Uh, let, let's get into it here. He says, uh, hey kids, give me all your fucking money. Got a hundred Mac books and I swear I'm not a druggie, which is them mocking Dance Gavin Dance lead singer Johnny Craig, who scammed his fans into buying laptops that he did not in fact actually own. These bitches say they got love for their fans, but they're fake and lie. It's all part of their plans. The scene is plagued with fucking gimmicks and lies, and you're a goddamn fool if you trust a disguise. So that kind of sets the table. Everybody's a goddamn liar, right? Sure. And then even Ronnie Radke talks shit on my Instagram. Give me your address so I can hit you with a mic stand. Now, Tim, we broke this news years after it happened <laughs> live on the show to tape. Ronnie Radke famously enjoys uh, violently hitting people with the base of a mic stand to, uh, what was that? Was that like a Six Flags or something, wasn't it? Yeah. And they, I think they got metal music banned from that Six Flags forever, which is funny because it's not a metal band, yeah. but no, it's not. It's, I don't even know if it's a band. Who's, okay. I think we should just adopt this rule. Let's not have music at Six Flags anymore. True. Have you ever seen a concert at Six Flags? Too? I haven't. I saw New Kids on the Block. Have I, ever, I think I've shared that here on the show. Probably. Yeah. I don't count it as my first concert, but I guess I probably should, mm. but I didn't purposely attend it. I was six or something. And yeah, it was just you're at there. a state fair, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, Six Flags. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. What else is in this piece of shit? Oh, this really hit my ear wrong. I'm a multitasking badass with, and you're a disgrace. Watch me laugh <laughs> off my ass while I'm pissing in your face, which weird, but uh, multitasking. What? It's 21st a... century idioms don't belong in songs. Yeah, well, it's also just a really weird brag, right? Like, right. Yeah. Well, I, in this case, the multitasking is him laughing while pissing, which I can do that. <laughs> you only do that. I, <laughs> dude! But it only works one way, because I don't, you laugh a, a fair amount on this show. I don't want to imply that every time you are laughing, you are peeing. That would oh, be no, gross. No, no, no. But every time you pee, you do in fact begin laughing maniacally like somebody with Engelman syndrome. Come on, dude. I don't say That's you have cool. Engelman syndrome. You're not some sort of clown puppet. Right. God. Oh, so accurate and disturbing. Yeah. There's a great Renaissance painting of that. I think if you do a Wikipedia search for Engelman syndrome, it's possibly the image that's showed. It's a it's a disturbing look. Anyway, they okay, so this is another <laughs> one of those songs where they try to they bring like, people back. Sort of cred. Sort of. Because but they, they immediately blow it because they say if you hate gay people, you should get your ass beat. You're a close minded faggot, bitch, kiss my feet. It doesn't mm, Yeah. It, the, the two it's not a negative times a negative, and so everybody's cool with it. Like, yes. And because they do that again at the very end of this song, they say, oh, right. hey, Westboro Baptist Church, fuck you too. Come and protest this dick. Faggots. And I don't understand. Now, like, if anybody deserves hateful speech, it is it is the Westboro Baptist Church. Those people are monsters. Right. Absolutely. This is a sentiment we can all kind of agree on. You know, so there you have it. We have found genuine common ground with CJ and his band of Attilas. But also, yeah, yeah. it doesn't excuse anything. If they're not carbon credits. You can't go plant 30 trees in Iowa and say, well, it's cool that we released a bunch of toxic poison into the lake in New Jersey. Like, right. you don't get credit for saying one good thing, so you get to say a bunch of shitty things. Right. Like, for example, if you're out there thrill killing the homeless, it doesn't make up for it if you occasionally work at a homeless shelter. If anything, you're probably there scouting future victims. I was going to say, uh, that's a real chicken or the egg situation, <laughs> Tim. Uh, very curious. Did you begin thrill killing the homeless, or did you begin volunteering to feed the homeless first? Which which came first? This is, seems like a trap and I'm not going to respond. Seems like a trap. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Track number 11, Unforgivable. Oh, 
Let's keep moving. <laughs> uh, unforgivable, your life is meaningless, you motherfucker. How does it feel to be alone for a lifetime, forced to eternal damnation and guilt in your own mind? Tim, we got a phantom zone. We're talking about Zod. Ooh, I like that. This went on for way too long, but nobody here had the balls to confront you. You'll always get what you deserve, so sit down, bitch, and know that you've been served. Wait, is this a dance battle? I love that. I love that idea. I feel like it's going to be some sort of choreographed dance fight scenario. Like he's going to do some sort of... Mm. Is capoeira, is that, a, is that dance fighting? Brazilian dance fighting. Yeah, I think he's maybe going to Brazilian capoeira somebody then. <laughs> This is, I am not joking right now. This is the second conversation I've had about capoeira in the last 16 hours. <laughs> that is weird. Anyway, yeah, entirely possible, Tim. Uh, Brazilian fight dancing. I love it. And someone's going to get served. And then once somebody gets served, you know it is... On. Correct. Is it? Okay. Correct. A little slow, but that's okay. It's been years. I was... It's been years uh, since you competitively danced. Well, it's, uh, that hasn't been years. I compete quite often. I just don't participate in competitions. I'm out there on mm-hmm. the streets, Garrett. I got a... Uh, yeah, I've got a cut-up cardboard box that I well, I spin on, friend. Of course. Let's see. Stay awake and reflect on this. Keep tossing and turning. Fuck you. Only thing I liked about this band, Tim, randomly, out of nowhere, and seemingly for no purpose whatsoever, random fuck yous. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Just shout fuck you in the middle of a song makes me laugh. But yeah, the, the rest Beatles of this is actually were going to do that on the White Album a whole bunch, but uh, <laughs> cooler heads prevailed. <laughs> Over little piggies, things are getting... <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> what? <laughs> Always have clean shirts. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if this song is about anything in particular or anyone in particular. The only way this sort of makes sense is if he was like abused as a child and this is a reaction to that. Other than that, like it's- Yeah, we're, uh, it's a sleepers. Sleepers? Is that the one where they go to the horrible child prison and then they get revenge on uh, Kevin Bacon? I don't know. I think so. Anyway, it's a real sleeper situation. They're conspiring to get revenge on someone who wronged them and they're going to make it last a while and it's going to be weird and they're going to torture them. They say, I prefer another form of torture. Watch your conscience suffer. Let the silence hurt your soul and I will laugh. Mm-hmm. You're sitting here begging and I'm just like na 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 na. Except that that's happens. growled. At least at one point. Oh, that's right. He does do a gremlin. Na 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 na. Yeah. It's Fuck this song. It's Fuck terrible. this song. Yeah. No Track qu- number 12, Shots for the Boys. We're back to songs about how hard they party, and this so hard. seems exhausting. I'm glad I'm not 22 and expected to do this horseshit, because uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, here we go now. Pour the shots out. Everyone is getting hammered, and the tabs are on me. We're going hard, because we run this shit, so stay the fuck at home if you party like a bitch. <laughs> Again, <laughs> real aggressive. What if What if in earlier songs, Tim, they said, come out, get a little party going, get your party tolerance raised, and then go home. Don't over party. Now, they're just saying, you know what? If you're one of those fuck Fucking newbies. If you're a noob, to use uh, a term from five years ago, you don't even bother, you bitch. Yeah, that's fair. One more shot. If you don't take it, then you're just a fucking asshole. Tomorrow morning is going to be rough, but last night was the shit. So suck on my dick. What I love about this, it kind of sounds like one guy likes to rage and party, and all of his friends are like, eh, you know, reasonable drinkers. And it's like one guy has the problem. He's like, tonight's going to be fucking epic, guys. We're going to do this and this. And then everyone's like, oh, we're going to have like a couple of beers and go home. It's Tuesday. Day, Carl. Yeah, it's basically it's the the same idea as that third uh, Cornetto trilogy movie, the Edgar Wright, Nick Frost. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that's a very specific reference. Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> you. <laughs> huh? Okay, now we're just saying directors. <laughs> Track thirteen: Party with the Devil, re-recorded. <laughs> Tim, there's only one way to make raging and partying even cooler, and that is to get your old buddy Mephistopheles in the mix. He says, so what? You don't agree with the things that I do, and you always accuse me? Very generic use of the word accuse. I don't know what, they never really get into it, what these accusations are. I assume it's binge drinking and potentially urinating in the hall closet. Well, present day, there's plenty of allegations. Oh, that's right. Yikes. (laughs) Uh, I like the idea, though, Garrett, because you pose that this is about partying literally- 
with the devil. I think it's mm-hmm. also possible that it's it's they're being tricked by some old wino and just an old alcoholic yes. who spent all of his money on a bad devil Halloween costume to convince a group of idiots that he is either Satan or to, you know, just have them. They don't really believe it, but it's kind of fun. And just he's scamming some free alcohol. Yeah. No, I uh, once again, Tim, I am all but certain you read my notes this week because it's <laughs> a, my literally I wrote down. This is a song about a dude in the woods that gets them beer named Mephistopheles. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> and it, it becomes a little bit more upsetting later in the song when he says, so drink up and now the devil's inside me and I feel better than I ever have before. <laughs> I have met at least three homeless men in my life that out of nowhere and without prompting screamed the devil's inside me. So not, not that uncommon. Well, no, Garrett, that man in the woods is the devil in this song. He is inside of CJ and CJ feels oh. better than CJ ever has before. Well, good for him. Yes. Live your truth. And I mean, the rest of it, it becomes, again... Oh, one uh, one more thing I want to read. The threat of rape? Right. <laughs> so, uh, we have a friend that, you know, it's fun to say outlandish things with your friends just to see how far you can push it to make your friends laugh. It's, you don't mean it. It's not for, it's not for a broad group of people because out of context, you'd sound like a monster. And Tim and I are very good at this game. We do this all the time. However, we have a friend who doesn't quite get it. And let's say you begin at a one and then and then somebody ups it to a two and then a three and they become slowly more severe, topping out at a seven or an eight in offensiveness, we'll say. Our friend, who will remain nameless, we'll call him CB, will jump to a 27 and just say the worst thing he could think of. Not, <laughs> not build to the 27, but just straight to the worst. And that's what happens with this fucking band. It's first, it's, you know, ignore the haters, we'll beat your ass. And then we get to, I don't give a fuck what you think. The devil's got my fucking back. If you keep running your mouth, you'll get your baby mother fucked. Uh, what? If I keep talking shit, you're going to have the mother of my child raped? Yes. That is aggressive, even as an empty threat. Yep. I was going to move right past it, but uh, well done, I guess. You're welcome. Track 14, The New Kings. <laughs> You know what, Tim? I wouldn't mind completely ignoring this song and just having a brief discussion of the proliferation and abuse of the word king and queen in our society. Have you noticed this? Yes, queen. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Yas, queen. Yeah, no, it's well, dumb. Sure. Everybody's a goddamn queen. You go king, blah, blah, blah. It diminishes the import and regality of your leaders when you call everybody king and queen. Yeah, this, Of course, I would never take such a filthy title. Right, but this but, is why you have to come up with a new title. The other thing we really need to talk about, and this is I think all I want to do, because the rest of this is just a retread of the rest of it, but oh, parts of steals? this... Yeah, it sounds a lot like uh, everybody forgot about Dre. Yeah, nowadays everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out. We all remember that. This one says, nowadays everybody want to talk like they got love for us, but what about last year? And then it devolves slightly, yeah. but yeah. it is identical in the opening. Nowadays, everybody want to talk. Mm-hmm. Every time. Drove me nuts. I ended up going back and listening to that song. Still really like it. Yeah. Got no problem with that. And with that, Tim, I say, who fucking cares? And goddamn anybody for forcing us to do this. Most most of all, actually, you know, I can't even stay mad at Gino. Uh, I think we should stay mad right at Quasi. Quasi. Quasi? Fuck you, man. Yeah, you might this have earned been- yourself a one-episode band. Man. Ooh. We haven't Ooh, done we that haven't in a while. We haven't anyone forever. Yeah. All right, we'll get to it in the end. All right, Tim, how did this thing do? Well, this hit number 22 on the Billboard 200. It sold some albums. It is apparently their most successful album, despite the fact that it objectively sucks. 22? Yeah. <sighs> All right, what did people think of it? Well, there are 121 ratings on Amazon, four and a half out of five stars on average, 74% five star, 6% one star. Your hmm. Turbo Force said in 2014, this is one hell of a band. I listen to these high energy, intense party goers during my workouts at the gym, and I am able to crush weights. These guys will rock and will continue to support their music. Can't wait to see them live. Five out of five stars. This guy's crushing it. I think if you were to remove the lyrics, like no singing at all, yeah, I could yeah. work out to this music and it would be great. Sure. Yeah. I but, will say- But the moment they start 
screaming. I can't do it, man. Yeah. Uh, Marla Blaney said in 2015, this is a pretty awesome album. The attitude is pretty hilarious. I think the tongue in cheek context really needs to be taken into account when listening to Attila in certain songs. I still can't outright support the use of certain words, but I'm not going to bust their balls either, as it's very clear they're not used with true hate either. Not that they give to S star 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 capital F S. I don't know what shit. Oh. Shit. 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 Yeah. Shit. Fs. But shit. I, fox. <laughs> shit. Fs. But I'd advise them to be a little more mindful about homophobic slurs. Side note. I was at Aftershock 2015 and saw Hollywood Undead perform. Holy shit. They are so awful. What terrible bigotry came out of their mouths. I was disgusted. I was just like, dude, they are such a Tilla wannabes, but they are promoting hatred at every other song and everyone is cheering. I had seen a Tilla several months before at Warped, and they promoted an atmosphere of inclusion. So relatively speaking, go Attila. I was disgusted <laughs> by Hollywood Undead in the support of the crowd around them. Five out of five stars. You know, if you're going to, and I have no idea what this crazy person's talking about, I also just realized we've done an episode on Hollywood Undead. Didn't they wear the masks? I believe so, yes. The title of that review is Pretty Awesome, Great Sound, I'd Love It If They Didn't Use the Word Faggot, It's Bigoted, <laughs> and then in parentheses, Unless It's Reclamation. Wow. <laughs> God, there's a lot. There's a lot there. <laughs> Marla uh, is a fascinating individual. Yeah. And okay. So if you are being divisive in whatever definition this person is using, it would be sort of funny, irresponsible as all get out, especially in the light of recent events, but very amusing if you, let's let's use the Foo Fighters because Dave Grohl does everything with a smile. God, I love that man. Can but do no wrong. If he were to just out of nowhere be like, left side of the stadium, the right side hates you. <laughs> right side of the stadium. The left side wants your girlfriend. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> it would be incredible. Yeah. But, you know, again, don't do that. But really, let's, if you're going to instigate division, do it in a meaningful way that we can all at least, I don't want to say enjoy, but bear witness. Tim, I've ventured down a cul de sac. I'd bail me out. Oh, Help yeah. I think the problem is you're going to shout bear witness a lot at future actions. I think that's where you're going with this. Anyway, Garrett, the next <laughs> review is by somebody whose name I cannot pronounce because when I translated this review from Japanese, it did not translate the, the name well. This is called Decadent Party Evangelist Attila, Slightly Dark and Rappy Death Score from 2013. Ooh, Rappy Death Score. Love it. <laughs> Don't be bound by common sense. Let hater hate. We're free. Sell souls to demon and party. Attila, a badass free missionary who adheres to such a style. <laughs> Chara, missionary? <laughs> Chara elite that fuses death score, rap metal, and hair metal slash LA metal. Chari plus badass plus Chari plus badass equals very dangerous. Specifically described in the band, to score a mirror with simple riffs and surprising developments to mosh, heavy riffs on rap metal Limp Biscuit, hard rock, and <laughs> punk extensions. The metal motley crew, which makes the catchy riffs heard, is a good feeling. Bitch, fuck, and party goer appear profusely in the lyrics. Confidence that you don't mind being criticized or hated by others. It's a perfect teamer metal for criminal partisanism. It is an album <laughs> Album that has made a great breakthrough with its best first appearance 22nd on the US chart and finally joined the ranks of popular bands both in name and reality. Although there were minor hmm. changes, it is almost exactly the same as a previous work, a safe route. However, to put it bad, there is also anxiety about rats. So I will minus one point. Wait, four out of five stars. I don't care about the rest of that entire <laughs> review. There's anxiety about rats? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I wonder if he didn't understand Ronnie Rat key. Rat key? Oh. The Rat King? Ronnie Rat King? Yeah. And that's probably what he thought. That's probably anxiety what he thought. about Ronnie Rat King. Hmm. Coming for you, Rat King. Uh, all right. Great reviews, Tim. Japanese ones included. Who's this for? Well, obviously, Garrett, it's for the Japanese. It's for those looking to crush <laughs> weights. And it's I think it's for people who are supportive of inclusion and reclamation of various slur words, but also love to rock and also have terrible taste in music. Yep. And, and you know, people who like to crush puss. Gross. Right? Gross, too. Uh, not, my, not my words. Theirs. Jesus. I would never say such a thing. Mm. I would n never be caught dead uttering no. the words crush and Puss. No, you say hot poon. <laughs> okay, fuck you for that. <laughs> Technically, in the according to the in show universe continu universe, what is it? The in show continuity. The, the, the there's a U in there. In 
in-universe continuity, the IUC. In-universe continuity. Yeah. According to that, yes, I, I do reference vaginas as hot poon. Can't deny the in-universe continuity. <laughs> Garrett, any other show. thoughts? No, heavens no. How did it take this long to talk about a 37-minute album about nothing? I don't know. There's a lot in there, Garrett. We had to really get into the genius lyrics this go-round. <sighs> it's a real interstellar, Tim. It's a- I, Murph! Sorry. <laughs> happens. All right, that brings us to the very end of the show, where I ask Tim, after we've been all the way through it, zero excitement this time around. Do you hate this album? Oh, God, yes. More than before, somehow. What about you, friend? Mm. Do you hate this? I do, and I'll tell you specifically why. I wrote pages of notes. I We toiled over this. We lived off of seawater and Twinkies for 11 days, and it was not worth it. When I came back to it, when we began discussing it together, and I even looked at my own notes, my own reaction. My own reaction about my own thoughts regarding this album was, I don't fucking care. And if I don't care, nobody else is going to care. And yet it still took two hours. Where did we go? What (laughs) happened? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm yelling. I apologize. Folks, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. All right. As always, if you can, reach out to us. You can go to heypod.com and click on contact us in the upper left-hand corner. That'll ask for an email address. It's just so we can reply. You can put a fake one in, but why bother? You can also just email us directly at heypodmail at gmail.com, and that'd be a lot simpler, so you could just do that. Or you can reach out to us on Instagram. That's heypod. Or you can find us on Twitter. That's album heypod. If you're looking for Garrett specifically, though I don't know why you would, I'm G Harvey Tweets on Twitter, and I'll talk to you about anything. Talk about birds? You want to talk about birds? I don't know anything about them, but we'll do it. But we want to hear from you. Write in. Uh, Let us know what you like, what uh, albums you'd like to hear, weird stories about Attila. Do you know what Tim used to do? Were you friends or a relative of Tim prior to this show? We want love to piece that together. I would love information about the before time, the long, long ago. What did I do? Who was I? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And I've known you longer than most people. Yeah. That's even weirder. But anyway, uh, so you could do that. You could also, and folks, I mean this. If you really do love this show, we need you to go out, open the Apple Podcast app, give us the five stars. Just get those five stars. If that's all you got time for, you're done. Thank you so much. If you got a little more time, throw a review in there. We have gotten some amazing reviews and I've begun to collect them, Tim. I don't know if you've noticed them. I call dibs. There's one in particular that I cannot wait to share. It's so fucking weird and funny, but we need more. Recently, you know what? I don't even want to get into it. Let's just say I'd like to see more. More five stars out there. I know you're out there, listeners. We've only got like 300 some odd reviews. That's total. And some of those are bad. 10% of those are bad. We have way more than 300 downloads every episode, like thousands and thousands and thousands more. So please open the app. Five stars. I'm begging. Tim, I, I hate begging. <laughs> but I'm doing it. Yeah. So I think that's just about it. Did I leave anything out? We got subreddits. We got, uh, we got a, what do we have there? Discord. The fuck it. Yeah. We got a Discord server. You can find us for God's sake. If you want to talk to us, I've given you 18 ways to do it. If you don't, you don't. For why I hate this album, I have been one of your hosts, Garrett Harvey. I have been the other Timothy P. Richardson. And on March 11th, 2017, Garrett P. Harvey said, if I was a bird, I would fly straight into your mouth. <laughs> Context, that was bird v. human. And Tim said, I don't think you could beat me. And I said, I know exactly how I could. Straight into that mouth. Block up that esophagus. Lickety split. Good one, Tim. I stand by it. And listener, if you made it this far, here's a fun fact. The Billy Joel band Attila was a weird progressive rock band. And there's video of them playing online. And I highly recommend it. It's both good and super weird. Like, not like, let's go buy the album good. But like, holy shit, what the fuck is this good? Hmm. So enjoy that. There's cowboys running through my dreams Nothing's quite the way it seems I joined the Navy, got kicked out in a week My facial features aren't distinct Try to find some meaning in these songs The genius is a genius, got it wrong No, it's a lobster murder sex thing It's the bleaching of the rear A full assault on both your ears Riffs are too repetitive The lyrics make no sense All the songs are besides The cover art's a mess 
listen to it for a week Now that week has passed It's the Why I Hate This Album Podcast With Tim and Gary I have been the funny one Fuck you Get off the microphone